A wealthy and beautiful California woman, Mrs. Patricia Gregory, has spent 14 years searching the world over for her little daughter, Joan Gregory. 14 years ago, Mrs. Gregory, her husband and baby daughter, were shipwrecked in the South Pacific. Everyone on board was believed lost except Mrs. Gregory, but she has always felt that her little girl was also saved. This belief has caused Mrs. Gregory to offer a large reward for news of any young white girl found in the South Sea Islands who might prove to be her daughter. Fourteen years she has waited in vain, but now the story begins in Los Angeles. It is just 12 o'clock midnight. A police radio car is cruising near Mrs. Gregory's home. Car 67 at Western and Slauson, a fight. Car 67 at the service station, Western and Slauson, a fight. Car 14. That's us. Let's hear it then. Calling car 14. Car 14 in North Chester Place, near the Adams Street entrance. Investigator Prowler, North Chester Place near Adams. That is all. Cut him off. We'll, we'll have a look around. We're right in that block now. Yeah, slow down. This ought to be it. I thought I saw somebody on that lawn there. That's the Gregory place, isn't it? Yeah, there is something moving there. He's up the driveway, right behind him. Where are you going, buddy? Who wants to know? Hold it right there and I'll show you. Hold it there, kid. I want to talk to you. Hey! Why don't you take that flashlight out of my eyes so I can see who you are? It's a lot more important that I see who you are. What are you doing here this time of night? Well, suppose you tell me what you're doing here, and then maybe I'll tell... Oh, golly, Whiskers. I didn't see your uniform at first. The cops, huh? Right, the cops. Now can you remember what you're doing in this driveway? Well, I might live here. Ah, you might, but you don't. We got a call on you as a prowler. A prowler? I'm looking for a lady's house. That's not prowling, is it? Well, depends on whether the lady wants you to be looking for her. This is Mrs. Gregory's house. Honest? She's the one I'm looking for. Much obliged. I'll go and see her. Hey, not so fast, buddy, not so fast. Do you know Mrs. Gregory? No. But I've got some news for her. I heard about her little girl being lost in the South Seas on a magic island. Oh, and I... <laughs> so, her little girl's lost on a magic island, eh? And her mama don't know it, but you're going to tell her. <laughs> well, I'm Santa Claus, and I'm taking you to the North Pole with me. Come on. Hey, let go of my arm. Oh, you're let going go. to the station house. Come on. Uh, no, I'm not. Help. Help. Oh, Mrs. You, Gregory. Will you shut hey, somebody up? Somebody help. Hey, hey there, you. Hey, now you'll walk him up in the Gregory house. I hope oh, I woke somebody's up the whole coming. block. Take it easy, son. Now, take it easy, here, Dad. Here, here, this is no place to stage a fight. Oh, well, we picked this kid up in your driveway on a prowler car. I'm not a prowler, honest. I've got to see Mrs. Gregory right away. Well, it isn't so easy to see Mrs. Gregory at midnight. Uh, what's your business here? Ah, uh, the kid's having a pipe dream about Mrs. Gregory's little girl floating around Australia on a magic island. <laughs> I'll see that he don't bother you anymore. Come on, son. Wait a minute. Hold it, officer. Did you say Mrs. Gregory's little girl? You bet he did. But nobody's going to get a chance to laugh at me again. I'll tell my story to Mrs. Gregory or not at all. All right, officer. I'll be responsible for this boy. And if he's not what he represents himself to be, I'll send for you again. Uh, my name's Bradford. I'm in charge of... Oh, the... that's all right, sir. I know you, Captain Bradford. Call us if you want anything else. And let us know how the kid's magic island comes out. <laughs> I'm sure glad you came out, sir. He was going to take me to jail. Well, if your story doesn't sound just right, uh, you'll still get a chance to go. Come on up to the house now. We'll meet Miss Gregory. I know she'll want to hear my story, but I kind of hate to get her up at this time of night. Never mind that. Miss Gregory and I were just going out. You go uh, open the door there and go right in. I'll follow you. Go on in, kid. But you ought to go in first. I'll be the judge of what I ought to do. Go on in. Now, straight down the hall to that lighted arch. What's going on, Tex? I thought I heard... Oh... Are you Mrs. Gregory? Yes, I'm Patricia Gregory. Let's go in and sit down, Pat. I'm anxious to get a good look at this young fellow. Say, Mrs. Gregory, your butler is mighty suspicious of me. Butler? <laughs> I'm sorry, Tex, but you should see your face. Huh, butler. <laughs> huh, what makes you think I'm the butler? Well, heck, 
Nobody but a butler could act as suspicious of anybody as you do. You're wrong, young men. Captain Bradford is in charge of my affairs. Manager of my estate, master of my yacht, pilot of my planes, and... But hadn't you better introduce yourself? Yes, we'll ask a few questions now, son. Uh, you sit over there. Uh, keep your hands in sight. Patricia, you stay near me. Don't be absurd, Tex. What danger could there be? He's only a boy. Yes, and Billy the Kid was only a boy when he had to put extra long handles on his guns to hold the notches. Say, I've had about enough of this. I've got something to tell Mrs. Gregory. Do I get to tell her or don't I? Of course you do. Keep quiet, Tex, and let the boy talk. Thanks, Mrs. Gregory. Well, my name is Jerry, Jerry Hall. This afternoon, I picked up a radio message on my short wave set on a band I'd never heard anything on before. Somebody was talking in funny broken English and said that an old sailor was very sick in a hospital somewhere near Honolulu. I guess he didn't say. There it is again, the same thing. Wait, Tex. Go on, Jerry. Well, I guess this old sailor was so sick, he didn't know what happened to him. He was raving about how he'd escaped from a magic island in the South Seas and about a beautiful little white girl that was living there with some strange people. Well, I read all about your little girl being lost in the shipwreck when she was a baby, and I thought that, well, that is... Oh, gosh, I guess it sounds kind of foolish when I try to tell it. No, it doesn't, Jerry. It isn't foolish at all. And Captain Bradford and I are leaving tonight within half an hour, sailing on my yacht. And we're going to find out all about that old sailor and his story. Well... I've been reading all about your little girl ever since I could read. Is it true that you were shipwrecked in the South Seas, just like the stories say? Yes, Jerry, it's all true. We were wrecked in the South Pacific when my little girl, Joan, was only a year old. Her father was lost, and of course, everyone else thinks my baby was also, but somehow I've never quite given up hope that someday I'd find her. And we've chased all over the world to see girls that people show to us to try and get some of the money Mrs. Gregory offered. But they never are the right one. Well, uh, well, how could you tell your little girl? I mean, if it really was her. Joan had a tiny birthmark, a little star-shaped scar on the back of her neck. Joan. Gee, that's a pretty name. Joan. I'll bet she'd be pretty, too. Maybe almost as pretty as you are, Mrs. Gregory. Thank you. There you are, Tex. Jerry's a bright boy. Yes, his eyesight's all right. I'll say that. We've got to go. You see, kid, uh, we heard the same thing on the short wave that you did. And we're sailing just as soon as we can get to the harbor. Boy, that's slick. Will you take me with you? Will we do what? Take me along, will you? Oh, please. Why, Jerry, we couldn't do that. We hardly know you. And you're so young, you can't be out of high school yet. Well, I know my dad would let me go. And I know a lot about boats and aeroplanes and radios and, well, and all that sort of stuff. And I'd work hard on the yacht and... Oh, golly, whiskers. How about it? Not a chance. Out of the question. I'm sorry, Jerry, but it just wouldn't do. Beg your pardon, madam, but the car's at the door. Everything is quite ready. Baggage loaded. Thank you, instruments... Johnson. We'll be out in a moment. Very good, madam. Now, Jerry, I'm afraid we'll have to say good night to you. It was sweet of you to come and tell us about your radio message. Won't you let me give oh, you... Oh, no, thanks, Mrs. Gregory. It was fun for me. You see, I've dreamed about finding your... Oh, well. Good night. I hope you have a lot of love. Thanks, Good night, Jerry. Son. Good night. Oh, say, I was just thinking, if he could only let me go, I'd telephone my dad. He'd let me go when I tell him how nice you are, Mrs. Gregory. Oh, Jerry, you're nice about this, and I would like to take you, but it wouldn't do, would it, Tex? Sorry, kid, but it just isn't in the cards. Boy, I'd sure like to see that magic island. The broadcast said there was something mysterious about it, how ships tried to sail up to it and couldn't, and that was big, but invisible. He gave the exact position. It might be true. Afraid not, Jerry. We've sailed through there on two steamer lanes. There isn't an island the size of a watermelon that isn't on the chart. Well, I, I guess I'd better go now. I'll uh, see you to the door. Are you afraid I'm going to take something? No, but uh, I'm going to take something. Something to remember you by. Open the door. Go ahead. Open it. Gee whiz. That flashlight nearly blinded me. Sorry, but we like to take pictures of the people who come to see us at midnight, and uh, we like to know when they open our door, too. But when I came in, I opened the door myself, and nothing happened. And I had the flashlight shut off. Now go on, kid. Get out. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I bothered you, sir. Good night. Tex, why were you so rough about sending him out? I just got an idea. That boy's smart. He could have broadcast that message himself, just to get a trip to the islands with us. Well, I suppose so, but... 
I do wish we could have taken him. Well, it might have been wise at that. And I could have kept an eye on him till we ran the story down. Oh, well, forget it. Hurry, Tex. Johnson's waiting in the car, and Jameson will lock up until we return. To the harbor, Johnson. And step on it. Johnson. Oh, Johnson. Yes, madam. We're awfully crowded back here. Couldn't you find room up front for this roll of steamer rugs? I tried to put the roll up here, but he wouldn't have it. Who wouldn't have what? The young gentleman inside the rug, sir. Huh? Say, Pat, there is somebody inside this roll. <laughs> and I can guess who it is. <laughs> I, I didn't think you'd, you'd find me till we got to the boat. And then maybe you'd take me with you. I ought to wring your neck. Now, take. Oh, I know, Patricia, but... Gee, I'm... Mrs. Gregory... That's an awful pretty name, Patricia. Oh, now, look. I'm plenty big enough to go with you. And we'll telephone my dad from the dock, huh? How about it, Tex? Nope. Oh, now, Tex. No. You got her on Miss Gregory all right, Jerry, but you can't do that to me. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't try to get around you. I can see that nobody could do that. You're too smart. But I would like to sail with you. I could learn a lot from a man as smart as you are, Captain Bradford. <laughs> All right, you win, kid. Golly whiskers. To the harbor, Johnson, and step on it. 